بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على من لا نبي بعده وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We praise Allah subhanahu wa taala, send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and all his companions, his entire household. We ask Allah to bless them all and to bless every single one of us. Beloved brothers, الحمد لله. We will be describing just a few aspects of paradise because we cannot do justice to Jannah in one little sitting, subhanAllah. The brothers are smiling already and inshallah we will be smiling even more when we enter paradise, may Allah grant it to us. I have before me 14 pages full of description of Jannah and I think it will take us 14 days, a page each, inshallah. So who's ready, inshallah, to come back every day? Inshallah. Inshallah. Sometimes when I was in the Middle East, someone says, inshallah, that means, you know, it's okay, carry on. <laughs> I hope that's not the case. Inshallah, what I will do is we will go through a few aspects of paradise. Some we may know, but just to refresh. All of it is taken from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the descriptions, we cannot come up with it ourselves, it has to be revealed. Because we don't know, it is al-ghaybiyat, that which is the unseen, nobody can guess it or come up with it. It has to be revealed. So anything to do with the world of the unseen, we believe what is revealed as much as the revelation without addition or subtraction, and we stop there. Where the details are given, we accept them, where they are not given, we do not need them. Subhanallah. So remember this. This is the general rule and law when it comes to the unseen. That it is impossible for anyone to tell you believing this when they're just making it up. So it needs to be something revealed. With Jannah, the good thing is that the Hadith describes, uh, as Shaykh had mentioned just before me, the Hadith describes how in it there will be that which no eyes have ever seen, no ears have ever heard, and nobody has ever thought about. It hasn't crossed the heart or the mind of anyone. It's a beautiful, powerful statement which is repeated all the time. And another thing, the Quran speaks about how everyone will have whatever they desire for. Think about what you're desiring for now, if you had it, how your life would have changed. I think a lot of us have a big pound sign in our, in our, in our heads. But the Jannah, you cannot use pounds or dollars, not at all. You have to make a payment here and now, work now, and you achieve your salary when the time is up. Like how you work for the whole month, and at the end of the, the, or the week sometimes, end of the week you get your salary, sometimes it's straight into your account, and you're so excited when you get that SMS to say, you know, 200 pounds, wow, excited, happy, I worked hard, yeah. And they didn't know that I left work five minutes early the other day. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So we get so happy, we work for a week, we get 200 pounds. Allah says, we will pay you, we will give you work for your life, we set you for the Akhirah. What type of a payment you have, what you think for, what you imagine, what you want. Imagine if someone told you, work for me. Uh, for a week or to what, for as long as pay, maybe a year, five years, and after that, you say what you want, I give it to you. It's impossible because man's wealth depletes, no matter how wealth he is. Bill Gates, you notice the name has a gate on it, which means it stops somewhere. His wealth cannot just carry on. Subhanallah. You know, I entered here, I told my cousin, you know, I don't intend to say things which make people laugh, but sometimes it comes out. I, I don't intend it. But sometimes it's just me. I think I just, I'm a normal human being like everyone else. And you know, you think of things like this Bill Gates thing came to me now, whilst I'm sitting with you, subhanAllah. I thought of it and I said, Wallahi, it's a gate, let me say it. It is. <laughs> Jannah has eight gates, subhanAllah, wide open, flung. You will enter from the one you deserve to enter from. And some people will be qualified to enter from any door they wish. This is why the one who fasts, we know the name of the door. What is it? Ar-Rayyan. There are other ones. According to one narration, there is a door called a Sabr. For those who are bearing Sabr. Those who... And there are so many names that are given. And some people will be told, enter from any one of these eight doors you want because you are qualified. You have so many degrees. MashaAllah. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us entry at least from one door. So they will be open. Whoever enters it, there is no chance of coming out again after that. And they won't think of coming out because in Jannah, as the Quran says, they will have whatever they want in it. Whatever they want in it. And then Allah says, وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ And we have something extra for them. We have something more for them. We'll get to that inshallah in a few moments. But in another verse, Allah says, فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي الْأَنفُسُ وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعِيُنُ the wording is so unique, so powerful. In it is what the souls will desire. What your soul desires. Imagine the term body desires is not mentioned. Because someone might say, my body is going to be depleted in the earth. The body I have here right now, it's going to, as Allah says, Minha خَلَقْنَاكُمْ وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ You know, we have created you from soil and we will return you in it. We don't want people to argue. There must be no statement of argument. Allah says, Anfus. You will be resurrected also again from there as per the plan of Allah. But exactly the, the, the fine details of what will happen, we only have a certain limit of it. We know we are resurrected. We know we will be very tall. We know we will be brought up to the age of 33. Those who have passed away beyond the age of puberty will be brought up to the age of 33. So even if you died at 18, 19 or 70 or 90, you will be brought up to the age of 33, a certain height, Situna Dira'an. It's translated by some as 18 meters and some as 60 meters. Whatever it is, it's very big. I was reading the hadith which speaks of the uh, tent or the abode that a person may have. Obviously, if you wish for it, you will be having it. And it will be there for you anyway if you'd like to dwell in it. It is made of a pearl. You know, when you see a pearl, what's the size of a pearl? Can anyone... You know, show me a size of a pearl roughly. Anyone seen one? Yes, there you are. Someone saying this size. You see this size here. And I've, I've perhaps heard of something slightly bigger. You know, it can fit in your hand. The pearl will be 60 meters tall. High. Going high. Imagine what type of a pearl that must be. Subhanallah. And it's a tent that you can go into. So why we say this is described in the hadith to show you it's beyond your imagination. The Quran says, "Fiha ma anfus." In it is whatever is desired by the souls. وَتَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنُ You see, ladi. What does it mean? Something that's tasty, isn't it? It's ladi. تَلَذُّ الْأَعْيُنُ is a description that doesn't have an English to translate it. To be honest with you, because I would say, for example, whatever is tasty to your eyes, but the reality is, you don't taste with your eyes. Do you taste with your eyes? No, we taste with the tongue. But whatever you see, you want it, you feel like having it, it's already there, it's sweet to the eye, it's attractive to it, it's yours. In, 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 in this world, what's attractive to your eye is not yours always. See, what's attractive to your eye, whether it's a vehicle or something, look, we, we're trying to be decent here. <laughs> whether it's a vehicle or whatever else it is, subhanAllah, it's not necessarily yours, it's not yours. And the, 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 one of the weaknesses that show that this world is nothing is that if you have the best of something, within a minute you see something that you might now think is better, suddenly yours is nothing. It's happening. You have the latest mobile phone. It's the best ever mobile phone. They can call it an iPhone 6, the one that just came out yesterday. <laughs> and what happens? You will have it and you hold it and you're so excited and the guy next to you has an iPhone 7 and you just put yours in your pocket. <laughs> and you're looking at the other one and you say, no, that cannot happen in paradise. No, because your own spouse, for example, will be changing as per the sweetness of your eye and its liking. Subhanallah. So you want tall, it suddenly becomes tall short, it suddenly goes short, Allahu Akbar. You know why? This way, that way, this color, that color. It's like, you know, changing with the, a flick, not even a flick. Sometimes you have uh, these apps that you get on your computers where you want to change something and you try 10 different, you know, uh, say for example, I'm just going to throw an example, a motor vehicle you want to purchase and they tell you what color would you like and they show you 10 different colors and you're clicking to see what it looks like. Click another color, click a third color, click... 
that click may happen such that your eye automatically chooses the color of the spouse, how it is liking it. And at the same time, as a moment progresses and the eye finds it sweeter to have a different color, it happens that way. And something described that is even better and more mind-boggling to show you that it cannot have crossed your head in the proper sense. All this we are saying, bearing in mind that in reality what we are going to have is far better than whatever we are describing here. Imagine. So what we are saying, mashallah, it's something. Remember we've heard of how, to, how important it is to work towards this. Because what's the point of talking about this when we are distant from it, you know? One narration says, whoever has drunk the wines of this world, you know, the alcoholics, the khumur that you have, will not be drinking that in the akhirah, which is prepared. So, if you do something here, you might not have it there. And yet Allah says, you will have whatever you desire. So some of the uh, ulama have explained very beautifully that the, the cord of desire of that item is just removed. So you won't desire it, subhanallah. You see, we might have three million, four million desires. One cord is removed. You won't feel that I'm not desiring this item, but you won't desire it because that little cord is removed because you did something in the dunya. You won't know. But others would know what it's like. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So, whilst I look at something, say, say for example, a spouse, may Allah grant us the whole. Wasn't loud enough, my brother. <laughs> wasn't loud. May Allah grant us the whole. Oh, oh, that sounds more like it. Remember, they're no sisters today. Don't worry. <laughs> so, whilst we would like to look, for example, at her at, with a specific, for example, shape, you know, the, the words described are so, so powerful that we feel shy sometimes to say. You know, the entire detail, because brothers might say, you know, tonight I won't sleep, brother. <laughs> you describing it? You know, Allah says, Uruban atraban. Allah says, Kawaiba atraban. These words have deep meaning. Sometimes, if you were to read the Arabic language in depth, you would actually blush while reading the meaning. You know, subhanallah. Describing the movement during a sexual act. Describing the movement. Quran, there is a word, subhanallah. Describing the perfect shape. Subhanallah. Describing elasticity. This is something very, very deep. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You and I know that the virginity of a woman is connected to a hymen here, here, physically, so to speak. Whereas it would be such that Allahu Akbar, I hope everyone here is married, Ya Mashaya. Allahu Akbar. It would be such that Every single time a person would be in that pure act, you know, it is not an impure act as is considered here in the dunya where you need a bath thereafter. There, subhanallah, it is described as so fulfilling. Let's stop there, inshallah. So fulfilling. You know, you might be looking at me and saying, well, why is it not fulfilling here? Subhanallah. The reality is, so fulfilling that it is mind-boggling beyond your imagination. In the dunya, you won't get absolutely what you like, how you like, and so on. No, you may have the most beautiful, you know, uh, wife, alhamdulillah. If she has worked together with you to earn paradise by the will of Allah, if you are together, Allah knows you may be having one another by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, we need to make sure we work towards it. You will have something absolutely perfect. And say for example, if there is a color or a shape or a size that you would like to see your spouse in, you will suddenly find your spouse with exactly your speck in your mind. And your spouse, if your spouse would like to be a, a specific speck, for your spouse, he or she will be, meaning speaking to the, the sisters or the brothers, will be exactly as they would like to be. So one thing, but appearing as two different shapes to two different people. You want to be something, she wants to be something, she is what she wants to be and you are what you want to be. It, it is to you what you would like it and it is to her what she would like. Allahu Akbar. So there is no confusion. There is nothing that can happen that is to the dislike of anyone. 
The word dislike does not exist. I don't like, I cannot know that does not exist, subhanAllah. So, this is just some, it's just the beginning, the start of it. You know, the calf, the calves which are just underneath the, 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 the back of the knee, subhanAllah, described as the color of the tusk of an elephant, meaning ivory, subhanAllah. But ivory of what nature? The purest, almost see-through, we would say. You know, when the houses of paradise are described, it is said that the bricks are of gold and silver, but not the gold and silver you and I know. Gold that is almost see-through, because the one in the house, if it is your place, you can see in it. You know, today you need a camera to look behind the wall. CCTV, there, your place, you can see through it. And outside you can see in. Uh, so from outside you can see in and from inside you can see out. But if someone else will not be able to peep into what is yours, no, the territory is such that the person who has the least amount in Jannah will have such that if they were to travel for 2,000 years, it would still be their own territory. For 2,000 years, it's still their own territory, subhanAllah. And you know, reading this is mind-boggling because we can cross the globe in a few hours by, with an aircraft, subhanAllah. And the hadith speaks about how the person who will have the least, Allah will give them, will tell them that, would you be happy if we gave you exactly what the whole world ever had in it? And he said, yes, I'll be happy. You won't ask me more? No, I won't. Would you be happy if we gave you double that? Yes, I'd be happy. Triple that, four times, five times? Well, you can have that and ten its time, subhanAllah. For who? For the one who has the least. And you know how I comfort myself? I always say, well, it's either me. The least will either be me, or I'm definitely better than that, inshallah. Because it, there's only one of two chances. You're either the worst guy, or you're better than the worst guy. You cannot be worse than the worst. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. So this is why we have hope in the mercy of Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant this to us. With the hur, if I can spend a few more minutes, the voice is according to your taste. How you would like it. You know, you have a voice, and this is why we say the voice of a woman is our fitness. And you know at times, unless she speaks like a man. <laughs> so, Fitna, in the sense that it's, it's sometimes so attractive that it can cause a sleepless night for a young and upcoming adolescent. Allahu Akbar, maybe even adults. But my brothers, you need to know that the voice is such, it is not just attractive, but it is according to what your senses consider the most highly attractive ever. Subhanallah. This is why when people say, will I be with my spouse in, you know, this woman who's been nagging me all along, is she going to be in paradise with me? Hey, you know, you're reducing the value of paradise. The reality is you don't know. I say wait and get there. Work towards that. Allah will not let you down. Never ever. Because you have what you want. Whatever you want, you have it. It's yours. You worked enough, now it's time for payment. You worked a lot. Now it's time for payment. And how is this payment? Wallahi. The sound, the scent, you know, the smell. Sometimes you have, you know, for our sisters, the hadith is loud and clear. If a woman walks out of the home wearing a perfume and so on and turning the head, she is equivalent to one who has committed adultery. It's a hadith. We cannot deny it or debate it. You know, it's, it's something that is very scary. But in Jannah, you will have a scent. Not turning your head. There's no point to turn your head. Brother, it's yours. You don't have to turn. It's in front of you. Allahu Akbar. You look this way, it's there. You want to look that way, it will be there. In a split moment. Subhanallah. It's yours. It belongs to you. It is controlled not by your voice. Not by your iris. But by your thought. Imagine. Subhanallah. By your thought. You're thinking and things happening. I don't think they're ever going to develop something of that nature. Subhanallah. Today we have, you know, senses, you, you walk near, the gate opens, you know, where you look at it and it opens, you touch it, it opens, things happening. This is technology, but come up with something, you think about it and it's there. Every time, as you're thinking, 
And it doesn't get stuck. You know, here, oh, the battery is not working. You've got to now fix the battery. No! Everything is completely perfect. Done! And this is why we say the scent, the sound, the look, the clothing, the jewelry, absolutely everything. Not only hers, but even yours. And she will look at you as she would like to see you. And you will be as you want. So it's something, it is a perfect condition. In fact, higher than perfection. It's created by Allah as a gift for us. After the period of test, which lasts on average 60 to 70 years in this ummah. So are you ready to bear patience for between 60 and 70? A lot of us look like we're between 20 and 40 years. I think the bulk of us, it looks like that from my eyes. So you've got a few more years to go. Subhanallah, be patient. And the beauty is if you've done wrong in the past, engage in tawbah. Here it is. Here it is. What will you get in return? Whatever you wish for. Beyond description. Subhanallah. We have the scent of paradise itself is according to your liking. What type of a scent? Amazing. That scent which follows you as and how you like. Wherever it is. It changes with the changing of what you would wish. And at the same time, there is nothing haram in paradise. How's that one? <laughs> nothing haram. Imagine, zero, haram. The word haram don't exist. That was only for the dunya. It was a ruling that Allah placed in order to test you. That's yours. It's your own. You know when you work for someone, you've got to clock in at 8 o'clock, leave at 5. When you become your own boss, you decide what time you want to go, what time you come back. But then again, you will have to stick to it because people might come to your business in Jannah. There is nothing haram, no timetables in, in, in that regard. You know, no restrictions regarding haram. Everything is permissible. Adam alayhi salatu wasalam, certain things were made prohibited for him. That is why some of the scholars go into the issue of the type of Jannah he was in. They call it Jannah to Ibtila. It could be a place of testing, a special place created by Allah of testing. He was tested. But the Jannah to Khuld, the one which we will be going into, as we said, you enter, there's no exit. You won't think about exiting. You won't want to exit. You know, today people rush to Britain seeking asylum. They never come out. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> but this is not Jannah. I don't know what made me think of that example. But it's a reality. Because you may have certain, you know, points of ease perhaps. You know, it might have solved a few of your problems. But Wallahi, Jannah in real, in reality, you enter it, you don't exit. It's over. The game is over. Subhanallah, yours, forever and ever. Another thing, there is no death in there, nothing at all. Death is something that will be brought forth and destroyed. There is no death after today, gone. Imagine death. Something else. You will never ever be hungry, but you will never ever be full. You will always be ready to eat. Allahu Akbar. No gymming needed. Allahu Akbar. No shedding of weight needed. You eat what you want, how you want, as much as you want, no excretion, nothing. In fact, it is released as a scent of musk according to your desire. Subhanallah. So you eat what you want, how you want, as much as you want, you will never get full. You know, sometimes we're eating and it's the most beautiful, you know, food that we have. But after a limit, you start feeling a little bit, you know, full. Your belly starts... You know, feeling full, and if you've had water, you can actually hear the water in it, and you're going to stop at that point, subhanAllah. You know, they say if you upload, you're going to download. Allah. <laughs> Jannah is not of that nature, subhanAllah. It is so beautiful that you have, and you continue having, and you feel as light as you would like to feel, and you continue and continue. Stop thinking of the roasted chicken and chips, please, my brothers. That will not be there because it, you, you're thinking of it. It is something else. It is lahmi tayrin min ma yashtahun. The birds of paradise which will be granted to you or me in terms of food. Something that is beyond imagination. Allah says that which you will want. You will want it. You will look forward to it. Something. The Quran describes types of food that may look similar, but they will taste totally different. Subhanallah. Totally different. So you have something and you will perhaps think this is what this is and next thing the taste of it is according to your imagination. And you'll say, oh, this thing seemed like it was that. But your imagination changed as it came through. You know, your eyes as they looked, you could suddenly taste it in your mouth. Allahu Akbar. And you have servants and slaves serving you. Well, the word is servants that are used. 
that would be serving you, created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In some instances, those who have lost little children, they will be there. Some of the uh, Mufassirin have made mention of it in some of the verses of the Quran that speak of that, that they may be servants in paradise, they may be birds, and they may come in a condition that Allah would like them to come to you, and in a condition that you would like to see them, subhanAllah. So those who've lost children, remember, may Allah make you the means of entry into paradise. When you get there, you meet them by the will of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In what condition? The most beautiful condition. So beautiful. And on top of that, even though you would not really need someone to serve you, but that is an honor. It's an honor, subhanAllah. You, you can do certain things yourself. It will happen automatically. Like I say, you look, and we are taught that you will already begin to taste just by the look. You begin to taste by the look. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. But still you have servants. And the hadith makes mention of the fruit of paradise being so close at hand. Close at hand meaning... You see the fruit, and it is within an arm's reach. If you'd like to pick it, the whole tree, everything comes right to you and it's, got, it's, it's taken. What happens today? The fruit of a tree usually grows quite high up, and that is a good fruit. So people have to climb up or shake the tree before it actually comes down to you. You see? It comes down to you. There, the tree will actually bring the fruit to you, subhanAllah. This is what is described in the Quran. The fruit comes to you. It comes to you. Subhanallah. And we have something else described. The faces of those in paradise will be shining brighter than the full moon on the eve of the 14th. There, out there. Have you seen it on some occasions? A huge white and shining completely. The shine is what is of importance. You will be of the complexion you want, but you will have a shine. That is beyond description. <coughs> Each one will be of that. And something else described. Is the jewelry, or should I say the adornment of the people of paradise. Amazing adornment of the people of paradise. They will be adorned with whatever they wish. And the terms that are used, pearls, rubies, aquamarine, various other words are used in the Quran. But remember... It is not exactly what we know here in the dunya. It is something beyond that. Like I told you, a pearl, a 60 meter pearl, where is that? If you had to see that, I think, you know, you would own half the world, to be honest with you. But we would have that. We will have it in the akhirah, as we want. The scent will be that of misk. Misk described as musk. But not exactly as we know it, far beyond the perfect musk. The scent that would really soothe you, that which makes you happy. On top of that, the houses that are built with the bricks, what is between the bricks, subhanallah, is made up of different types of jewelry, different types of items. You know, what is described also in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, very, very beautifully is how thin, how thin the jewelry will be. You know, the warik is it's actually like, like a leaf, a leaf of gold. And the gold, if it is very thin, usually it becomes very weak and soft, so they mix it with something here in the dunya to make it a little bit harder. Because gold by nature is quite soft. And so the carrot becomes lower, and the value of it drops, but it's very thin. There, no. It's as thin as is, as pure as is, and it's yours. It belongs to you. This is why the description of the person who will enter Jannah, the last person to enter paradise, there is a description of it in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And he says, it's a long hadith, beautiful hadith. And this man, after having asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant him closeness to the door, and thereafter, you know, let me get into the door and so on, and when he sees the light, you know, he thinks perhaps this might be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he wants to, he thinks of prostrating and immediately he hears the caller calling that I am the gatekeeper of paradise and I'm at your service, subhanAllah. And he says, oh, uh, you know, this is just a gatekeeper? 
And then he, he is directed further towards his own Jannah. Jannah means a garden. You have a garden. As we said, minimum garden is not mentioned by, is not uh, measured by meters or kilometers. You see, when the hadith speaks of mention uh, of distance by travel, distance, listen to this very carefully, some very, very important point. The distance, we know it as meters and kilometers. The Prophet ﷺ, 1400 years ago, he used a different measurement to describe distance. What was that? Time. He used time to describe distance. If I were to ask you who is the first person to use time to describe distance, you have to say Muhammad ﷺ. Today, scientists use time to describe distance. What is a light year? So they say it's 15 light years away, 4 light years away. SubhanAllah. The distance, the speed of light for 4 whole years, that is called 4 light years. Who started that? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Where did he get it from? Wahi. Revelation. So don't think these people are a big deal. They came up with something that was already there. But people said, how is this described as 2000 years of distance? It says 2,000 years. Didn't I say moments ago, a traveler would travel 2,000 years. That's the distance of the smallest garden. Today, they actually tell you, yes, years can, the, the term year can actually you be used to measure distance. Allahu Akbar. A few years ago, it would be foolish. If I told you, for example, uh, you know, how high is that? And you say three seconds. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. You'd be foolish. People would say, what are you talking about? But wallahi, we need to know this. It is Islam that came up with the use of time to measure distance. Allahu Akbar. Subhanallah. And this is for paradise more than anything else. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of this. So this man, when he gets to his own garden, he sees the pathway leading to it full of pebbles of gold and silver and different types of pearls and, and rubies and so on. And he... The door is open automatically and he sees even a bigger light and that happens to be the gatekeeper of his own garden. And as he enters, he has a peep at what's going on, one foot in, one foot out and he's waiting and he's looking and he's seeing. 500 years pass and he's still watching. Allahu Akbar. Whoa, this is mine. Like we said, you're neither hungry nor you're full, but he's just watching. Because if it was us, you know, lunchtime we'd have to go. If it was the dunya. So he's looking until he is told, you're not going to come in. And who's telling him that? The whole. You're not going to come in? Subhanallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us this jannah. Allah, we work towards it. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us in every single way. And this is why, if you take a look at the description of the trees of paradise, the bark, another description of gold and silver. One bark of gold, another bark of silver. But what type of silver? See through. Gold, see-through. Can you explain see-through? Perhaps purest. Today we stop at 24 carat. What if I were to tell you 2,400 carat? It's like what we said the other day. People get excited. Hey, the camera on my phone is now 16 megapixel. That's the top. Brother, your eyes are 576 megapixel. Your eyes and mine. And still, we never ever, you know, roll our eyes and say, let me focus there, you know. <laughs> It's never happened. And we don't realize the gift of Allah. So use your eyes in a way that will result in you entering paradise. When you've lowered your gaze for the sake of Allah, you deserve something on that side. The payment is coming. When you've swallowed your anger, the payment is coming. It's coming. Sometimes you are told, Ikhtar min ayyil huri shah. It's in the hadith. You choose whichever hole you would like. You know, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant it to us. And may He open our doors. So, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran describes the something important. Every time we hear, we say, Jannatin uh, Tajiri. I'm sure the word Tajiri is always there. You know, the little children, they ask me sometimes, what's the meaning of Tajiri? Is Tajiri going to be in Jannah? And you start saying, no, Tajiri means that which is flowing. But that the Arabic language has mentioned after the term flowing, what is going to be flowing. So what will be flowing? Tajiri min tahtiha al-anhaw. 
beneath this garden there will be flowing rivers. But rivers of what? So these rivers will be everlasting. They never run dry. They are at a distance that you would like. Now, how is my garden going to be? Only Allah knows. But what I do know is if I want to see that river flowing, I will be able to see it. it who does it belong to? Me. How long is it? The least would be 2,000 years. Remember, we're using time to describe distance. The least of my river. And what's the river? So Allah describes river of pure honey. Imagine. Why pure honey? Do you know 90% of the honey in the market is not pure? Do you know that? Everyone's looking at me. Believe me, 90% of the honey uh, uh, that's available you know, in the stores is not actually pure honey, even though they write 100% pure. It's not actually pure. Pure honey is something else, subhanAllah. And pure honey is extremely expensive and there is a big shortage of it on the globe. They cannot make ends meet. So this is why they have a specific way of, you know, this farming, honey farming, where half of it is actually sugar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. Imagine we're saying Allah protect us from sugar. <laughs> so what that means is Allah protect us from the deception. There's a lot of deception going on. Jannah, the Quran says, pure honey, not Langanese honey that's found down the road. No, pure honey. And what is it? A river. So the benefits of pure honey in the dunya, it is something that will be found in the purest of its form in paradise. I cannot describe the purest form for you, but Allah has sent it down to us through the bee in order for it to be a shifa for me and you. The Quran says that. But in its form, in the dunya we form. In the form that is made specially for this world. You know, it's like the speck. We, in my part of the world, we're allowed to import motor vehicles directly from Japan. And what happens is, when you want to order cars, vehicles, they tell you this spec is only for Japan. Wow, what a beautiful vehicle, so beautiful. It's only for Japan, you don't get it anywhere else. It's the top spec, and if you were to see in a country like this, that spec doesn't even exist here. Why am I saying this? Because man always needs examples to understand, you know. So although we are using a far lower example for something far higher, but just to bring it closer to the mind, if I were to tell you honey in the dunya, do not think it's going to be the same speck of honey in the akhirah. Don't. It's a totally different speck. You don't get it here. You won't know about it. You need to get there first, and then inshallah you'll see what it's talking about. The same applies to milk that doesn't go bad. Neither does the color change, nor does the smell change, nor does the taste change. Subhanallah. Milk. A river of milk. Imagine white. Today, you have the Thames down the road, subhanallah. As dirty as it is, nobody would take a cup and put it in and drink to say, the Thames, I've drank the water of the green. Nobody would do that. Nobody. Because we know that the minute there is a little bit of you know pollution this way, that way, the water needs purification. Before you drink it, there, the honey don't need no purification, the milk don't need no purification, neither does it need pasteurization, homogenization, whatever else the honey is going, meaning the, the uh, milk goes through, it doesn't need any of that, it's yours, it's as pure, and it has the benefits that you would like it to have, and it will quench you, and at the same time, as much as you drink, you will feel quenched, and when you want more, you will still feel like you need more, and you continue drinking as you wish, how you wish, and don't worry, you will never have too much of the dairy product. Because the beauty of it, it's not going to be the milk of a cow. It is the milk of Jannah. Like we said, the honey is not the honey of a bee. It is the honey of Jannah. How Allah has it there, He knows. If he has chosen a method, he knows. Whatever he's described to us, we stop there. We don't need to add or subtract. So we say, there will be honey of its own nature. There will be milk of its own nature, subhanallah. There will be water, subhanallah. Water also that is so pure, it can be drunk immediately. And at the same time, it has the benefits of quenching. The benefits of a taste that is unique. And on top of that, there will be flowing rivers of what is termed as khamrin laddatin li sharibin. Khamrin laddatin li sharibin. The mufassirin say here the term khamr does not refer to the blocking of the brain. You know, khamru ma khamr al aqlu wa ghatta. Normally the term khamr refers to that which intoxicates. But there, there is no intoxication in that. It is pure, pure, completely pure. How? 
Well, let's get there, inshallah, we'll find out. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant that to us. You know, we have fruit juices of a pure blend. If you have them from certain valleys, even some valleys in Cape Town and so on, that I have actually, uh, you know, tasted some juices of and from, it's amazing. It has a taste that you would never, ever have guessed existed until you taste it. You wouldn't have guessed that this taste exists. So people t say, well, you know what, I really love this and I like that. You like it because that's what you know or that's what you heard about. Here, neither do you know and you, you, you may have heard about, but you need to wait to get a taste of it before you would actually appreciate what it's all about. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so much and the description is something amazing. Like we say, there is no tiredness. Nobody will get tired in paradise. Imagine you get tired, you know, people go for little vitamin B jabs, people go for this and that, and people say, I'm tired, we need to rest, and so on. No, you want to rest, you will rest, not out of tiredness. Subhanallah. No tiredness. No anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's radi, he is happy, it's over. He is pleased with you. There is nothing that you will become angry about, nor will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become angry about anything, because that is all over. The anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at that particular time, He won't be angry with anyone of those of Jannah, and they will not be angry and upset. And we were speaking about mazid, what does Allah have extra? He will ask the people of Jannah, oh people of Jannah, after they've entered, do you have what I promised you to have, absolutely everything? They will say yes. Is there anything else? No. Now we have something we would like to give you. What is it? Then the barrier between them and him shall be lifted and they will see him for the first time. Subhanallah. They will see him. Rabbul Izzah. And that will be the biggest gift that the mu'mineen will be having in Jannah. To see Allah. May Allah grant it to us. Imagine, you know, I'm sorry to be giving this example that I'm giving, but I have to because we are human beings. You know, you see something beautiful. You see, for example, whether it's a little baby or whether, you know, you may have had that first halal glance at someone who might be of the opposite sex. See how I've worded it, subhanAllah. <laughs> Let's hope it's not too long. You know how the brothers say, hey, hang on, don't wait, you know, my first gaze, my first gaze. No, no, no. That's not how it works. You've got to look down. You've got to look down. Remember, you want that paradise? Look down. You look down, you will get that paradise. Allah knows what you did. And you need to carry it on. Not just, today I'm feeling holy, you know. The Sheikh was telling us, so, inshallah, today I look down. Tomorrow morning, ah, da, da, jannah, let's see, we'll make tawbah, inshallah. Let me carry on with you. It doesn't work that way. That's the weakness of man. Don't allow that to happen to you. You engage in tawbah, you make tawbah properly, sincerely, subhanallah. You look down today, you look down every day. Don't spoil it, subhanallah. Imagine a glass of milk, and suddenly one day you put a droplet of urine in it. What happens? The milk is gone. Subhanallah. May Allah grant us purification. May He make us preserve that milk of ours. So, look, we're diving so deep into Jannah that I'm even, you know, losing track of what I was saying, Subhanallah. Allahu Akbar. Can anyone remind me? Oh, brothers, you're also in Jannah already? <laughs> Subhanallah. Yes, Mazid. So Allah, Jazakallah khair, Habibi. No, that doesn't mean you're still in the dunya. <laughs> so, Allah says, this, the beauty that I was saying, we get excited when we see something gorgeous around. There is nothing. Wallahi, it is zero. Nothing, nil, naught. Imagine the one who created the skies and the earth and everything beautiful and gorgeous from the sceneries to the human beings to everything else and the, all the planets and everything that's flowing and whatever has come, anything in the entire creation. Who made it? You're going to see him. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Who made me, you, your eyes, your teeth, the pixels, everything? We want to meet him and we will meet him. That will be the biggest ever gift that anyone could ever have. And it's going to be over and above what Allah has promised me and you and what you'll be happy with. We'll already be happy. I mean, you're happy. You know, you give a child 
one sweet, the child says, oh, I'm happy, very, very happy. And you throw the bag at the child. What will the child do? Oh, I've got a whole bag. SubhanAllah. You know, this is a human being description. It's something minor, small, something very, very finite, something that will come to an end. With Allah, it's infinite. There's no stopping. And you meet Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us. And may He, you know, the hadith speaks of a beautiful word, لَذَّةً نَظَرِي Nadari ila liqa'ik. Oh Allah, grant us the sweetness of looking at you. Ya ilaha al-alami. Oh Allah, grant us the sweetness. It means it's going to be so sweet to the eye to look at Allah. Imagine, if you think things are gorgeous here and it's sweet to the eye and you're looking at it, look down my brother. There is Allah that you need to look at that will be the true sweetness of your eyes. And this is why make dua, ask Allah, use the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa like Rasulullah sallallahu used to make the dua, Ya Allah, grant us this, grant us paradise, and in paradise, grant us, you know, the sweetness of looking at you, and so on. That brings me to another point. There will be different levels of paradise. <coughs> One narration makes mention of 100 levels of paradise. And the top will be for the top. Not to say that the bottom are bad people, but the levels. It depends how hard you work, subhanallah. What rank you've achieved, how much you really love the Anbiya. We heard moments ago, you love him, you prove that love for him, you achieve that rank, subhanallah. You achieve that rank. May Allah make us from amongst those who do not merely pay lip service to the love of Rasulullah but we really become those who understand. Don't insult him. What is the way of insulting Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa Innovating in the deen. That's the biggest way of insulting the messenger. Why? He was sent to me and you to show me and you how Allah wants to be worshipped. That was his job. He came here to tell us about Allah and how Allah wants to be worshipped. What is it Allah wants? Halal haram was shown. How to worship Allah was shown. And then we believe that the deen was completed and sealed totally. Sealed. Whatever was in it, it was in it, and there is nothing out of it that's supposed to be in it at all. So that was his job. He asked the Sahaba in Hajjat al Wada, This is my job. Have I delivered? They said, Yes. He says, Oh Allah, bear witness that they bear witness that I've delivered. And we come and innovate. Allahu Akbar. You know what an innovation means? It means there is one thing you forgot that the Sheikh down the road knew. That's what it means. That's the meaning of innovation. How can we get paradise if we want to come up with something more than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has required? He sent the best of creation to show you how He wants to be worshipped. And we want to worship Him in a way that was not there. This is why we say, you want paradise, you want everything, alhamdulillah, we described it. But this is a small explanation of how we would be insulting Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Come on, he was a Nabi. Khatam al-Anbiya. Ballagh al-Risalata wa adda al-Amana. We believe that. He conveyed the message in the most eloquent form, in the highest form. And he definitely delivered all the goods. Delivered. There are no goods that he forgot to deliver. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that love so that we can meet him in paradise. And it is reported that if all the creatures who were supposed to be in paradise had to be brought onto one level, they would be fitting on that level with ease. But still Allah will separate them into 100 different levels. This is also the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, really, may He grant that to us and may He open our doors. We're only on page 3, my brothers. <coughs> You know, I'd like to end with a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wherein he makes mention of how if a disbeliever knew the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had, he would never lose hope in paradise. And if a believer, and, and he would work towards it, and if a believer knew what Allah had prepared in terms of adab and in terms of punishment for the kuffar, he would never feel secure from that particular punishment and he would work to protect himself from it. May Allah make us from amongst those who work to protect ourselves from Jahannam and who work towards achieving Jannah and who work for the pleasure of Allah. People are more or less three categories. One, those who are motivated by listening to paradise and the description of it. So what happens? They want to work towards it. When you read Salah, this is obviously my example that I'm giving you. 
when you read Salah, it is a payment towards what? Your, your building in the Akhirah, your garden, your Jannah. Today we have, you know, this issue of mortgages, and I'm sure in this country a lot of people understand it. And there are people who come up with what may or may not be Sharia compliant mortgage and so on. Uh, and everyone says, yeah, I need to buy the house. And when we get the house, we're excited, mashallah. And I'm speaking reality. People are excited. They say, no, I got it from, you know, Amana or Takaful or whatever else they have it from. And they say, no, I will be paying every week, you know. So it gets automatically deducted. So if my salary, for example, is uh, 400 pounds a week, uh, 200 pounds go towards my house. And I'm excited and it's going to happen for the next 20 years. Am I right? This is what goes on, isn't it? Yes. So for 20 years, I'm going to pay half of my salary and it's gone towards what? The house. So if I'm delayed, what happens? Sometimes you have people who want to compound. Interest is added, a'udhu billah, haram. If it is Sharia compliant, one wonders what exactly they would do. And that is what makes it different. Sharia compliant, non-Sharia compliant, is this interest default factor. May Allah protect us. So, a person is ready to pay every week half of his salary, which means, listen to what it means, listen carefully. You work so hard from one time to another, half of that went in order to pay for a house that you are not going to live in for more than 20 to 30 years. Do you know that? When you finish paying for your house and it's really yours, I think you won't really have more than 10, 20 years to live. I I'm sorry to say that, but it's a fact. If you're lucky, you may live a little bit longer. We're ready to pay half of the effort we have made in this world, in terms of work, to have a home here. Well, can I tell you, Allah says it's far easier to pay for your Jannah. Just get up for Salah, payment number one. Get up, uh, Dhuhr, payment number two. Lower your gaze, automatic bonus payment. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> Wallahi, it's a fact. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed you in a place where there are women walking past, Allah is giving you an opportunity, a bonus to earn points. Subhanallah. <laughs> Have you ever looked at it that way? Have you ever played these little computer games? When I was young, we played something called Pac-Man. You know that? And after you eat quite a few, there's a bonus that comes out. And you run for that bonus before it goes away. And you make sure you deal with it in the right way. Subhanallah. <laughs> that is Pac-Man. You know your, 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 your score becomes high. You become a winner. You get excited. Nobody's giving you a prize. It was just a waste of time, believe me. Perhaps skill, tact, it kept you a little bit at ease because you had stress from here and there. And you know, Pac-Man kept you up. Subhanallah. But that bonus is what I'm talking about. So your salah is a payment, your zakah is a payment, your hajj is a payment towards your paradise, those manistata ilayhi sabil and with its conditions. And at the same time, all the other things, your protection, subhanallah, from certain items is a bonus. Why we say that? To fulfill your obligations is a payment. To protect yourself from prohibitions is a bonus. Have you thought of it? Because the protection from prohibition can only happen when that prohibition becomes accessible to you. <coughs> Subhanallah. So when Allah has put us in a country like Britain, we have so many more opportunities of bonuses than someone living in the city of Mecca. But they will also have the bonuses of a different nature, perhaps sometimes of a similar nature. Because with us, to lower your gaze is far more valuable, far more, should I say, priceless than someone who does not get that opportunity because it's not there. Everyone is covered. So that's a gift of Allah of a different nature. You have an extra opportunity of bonus. Why throw it away? For Pac-Man, you could understand how to deal with it. For this, you don't. What's it? What's more important, the paradise or the little game that you were going to clock the entire meter with? I scored 99999. So what? Subhanallah. It still had to go back to zero, didn't it? <laughs> Allahu Akbar. My beloved brothers, we had a beautiful few moments that I spent with you. Really, I make dua, ask Allah to grant us the paradise. Remember, everything is a payment. You make a payment and sometimes you can pay more. It's like when you have this house and suddenly, you know, a, a brother comes and says, Brother, don't worry, I give you a million pounds. Oh, wow. First thing to do, let me pay for my house. This is a bonus. And you can have your house. I don't think there are any brothers who would actually give a million. But we would not be seated here, brothers. <laughs> but... It's, it's something good. If you have an amount, suddenly your business did well, and you would sort out your debts very quickly. So that's an opportunity. The same applies with paradise. You can have a better place, a higher rank, and you can continue. This is why the last thing I want to say here, inshallah, it will be the last thing, is...
the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, you know, we can cry when we read that some of them were told by name that you are from paradise. You are from paradise. You are from paradise. That's how it happened. Do you know that? Imagine Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes back from Mi'raj and he informs Bilal ibn Rabah radiallahu anhu through a different story. That, Ya Bilal, you know what? You already there. You know, I heard your footsteps in paradise. La ilaha illallah. What did they do? Were well, they excited, right? I've got my place, everything set from today on. Relaxing, sleeping, doing what I want. Everything is okay. Because my business class seat is booked. Or first class seat. That's not how it works. No ways. They worked even harder. It made them work more. They gave their lives after they were already promised paradise. Subhanallah. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq. Umar al-Farooq radiallahu anhum. Wallahi, these were the champions of all. Imagine, they were known as al-Mubashirina bil-Jannah. Given good news of paradise. Not one day did they slacken in their salah. They became even more regular. Subhanallah. They were working towards what they knew. These are levels. Let me work for my level now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the highest levels of paradise. Amen. My brothers, inshallah, at some stage we may want to hear more of this. May Allah give us that opportunity. Like I said, three types of people. One, those who would enter paradise because they want to get to paradise. So they worked towards going into it because they heard about it. Those who will enter paradise because they were fearing Jahannam. That's another group of people. Those who did their deeds because they were scared of the fire. So that's why it's good to know the description of Jahannam. Because if, if the description of Jannah doesn't make you work towards it, the description of Jahannam might prod you towards walking, to, meaning working towards it. And the third, those with the highest level, they work for the pleasure of Allah. Subhanallah. They work for the pleasure of Allah. This is done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They achieve both protection from Jahannam and entry into paradise. May Allah grant it to us any one of those three ways. May He grant it to us. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu.